This thing is called a contact sensor, sometimes called a door and window sensor, even though I think that's pretty close-minded. The problem is, with so many of these on the market, how do you decide which one to buy? Well, today on The Hookup, I've got 14 different sensors from 13 different brands, and I'm going to show you why, after four months of rigorous testing, I'm pretty sure that this sensor from Akara is the one that you should buy. Are all these sensors the same? Definitely not. They've got different prices, sizes, communication protocols, batteries, programming, and of course, different compatibility with your existing smart home. I spent four months testing these 14 sensors, and in almost every case, the Akara contact sensor came out either on or near the top. If you've never used a contact sensor, here's a quick rundown of what it does. Inside the case is a battery and a magnetic reed switch that turns on when it gets close to a magnet and off when it moves away. Whenever the switch state changes, it sends out a message telling you that the door is opened, or that you forgot to close the refrigerator, or that your motorized pergola is open and now it's raining. Out of all the sensors that I tested, there are three that go on my recommended list. The Acara door and window sensor, the ring alarm contact sensor, and the Yolink outdoor contact sensor. But the vast majority of people watching this video should just get the Acara sensor and call it a day. And here are five easy reasons why. First, size. The Acara sensor is one and a half inches tall and less than an inch wide, making it easy to conceal and not an eyesore even when it's installed in plain sight. The Acara sensor is smaller than most of the other sensors I've tested, which is partially due to the fact that it uses a much smaller battery than the rest. A small CR1632 coin cell lithium battery compared to the normal CR2032s and CR2450s like in the other sensors. And that makes the second reason to buy the Acara sensor a little bit more confusing, and that's battery life. I set up a testing rig to open and close these sensors every 15 seconds, and I ran the test for four months. I made this graph to show the battery life over time for each sensor. You can see that all the Wi-Fi sensors died really quickly, because as I've mentioned before in other videos, Wi-Fi is just not made for battery-powered devices. And that's without even considering the significant reporting speed delay for Wi-Fi devices. However, the rest of the sensors with protocols like Bluetooth, LoRa, Zigbee, and Z-Wave more or less perform the same, except of course for the Acara sensor, which lasted twice as long as the next best sensor and sent its last closed message after four months of constant use and 878,364 cycles. And to give that some perspective, the Ring Alarm contact sensor was the next best with 377,893, and that's with two batteries inside. Under normal circumstances, I would expect the replaceable batteries in the Acara sensor to last at least two years, and probably much more than that. Third, we need to talk about accuracy, because battery life doesn't mean anything if the results aren't accurate. And most of the time, you're going to be using these sensors in a security system type application, where a false alert or a missed alert could lead to some serious issues. Thankfully, the Acara sensor also finished at the top of that test, maintaining over 99.5% accuracy over the course of the test, and in reality, it was probably even more accurate than that, because at one point, after about 600,000 cycles, when the Acara was the only one left, my drawer slides in the testing rig started seizing up, and it prevented it from closing all the way, which would have made it impossible for the Acara to register that cycle. The fourth reason to choose the Acara sensor is compatibility. Acara sensors use Zigbee, so if you've already got Home Assistant, SmartThings, Hubitat, or any other Zigbee-enabled system, you're going to be able to add these sensors right in. The Acara sensors work with your existing Zigbee mesh, so if you already have a strong Zigbee network, then the Acara sensors will have increased range and reliability as a result. If you don't already have a home automation hub, I'd highly recommend getting an Acara hub, either the E1, M2, or G2H camera hubs, which open up every other compatibility that you can think of, including HomeKit, Google Assistant, and of course, Amazon Echo. And that brings me to the fifth reason to go with the Acara sensors, and that's price. The Acara contact sensor is normally priced at $18, and it can frequently be found on sale for a few dollars less than that. There are also bundles where you can get something like an E1 hub and three contact sensors for $75, meaning each sensor is just $15 in that case. The Acara sensors are actually one of the cheapest sensors that I purchased in this video, and when you factor in things like battery life and replacement battery cost, the value goes up even higher than that. So yeah, the Acara is probably the sensor for 95% of people watching this video. But there are a few cases where you might want either the Ring or the Yolink sensor instead. Starting with the Ring. If you already have a strong Z-Wave network and you don't want to get into the Zigbee ecosystem, then the Ring sensor has great battery life and great accuracy at a very competitive price. 
Even though it's called the Ring Alarm Contact Sensor, you don't actually have to use it with the Ring Alarm System, and I had no problem adding it to Home Assistant using Z-Wave JS and a Zoos S2 Z-Wave USB stick. If you're looking for outdoor sensors, like for a fence or a gate, then the Yolink outdoor sensor is great. Not only is it water resistant, but the range is significantly larger than Z-Wave or Zigbee using LoRa, and it doesn't require a mesh network. Each new sensor that you add to your Yolink hub shows up right in Amazon Echo, ready to be used as a trigger for a routine. So automating is just about as simple as it could be. But at the moment, all their integrations are done through their hub and they go through the Yolink cloud. And unfortunately, that means that if your internet's down, you won't be able to use your sensors with any automations. And that's it. I was planning on making a 10 minute video on these contact sensors, highlighting the pros and cons of each one, but honestly, there is just no reason. The Akara sensor is better than the rest by a significant margin, and it gets my overwhelming recommendation. This video isn't sponsored by Akara at all, and I even paid full price on Amazon for the sensor that I used in this test. If you appreciate the time and effort that it takes me to do these tests, and you decide to buy something from this video, please use the links down in the description, because as an Amazon affiliate, I earn a small percentage of that sale at no cost to you. Thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel, and if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.